that the players will not find the going too tough, not find uh, the conditions uh, too enervating. The match week 10 results, Chapleton Maroons beaten 3-0 by Humble and Q. The sacking of the Chapleton Maroons coach, Lenworth Teacher Hyde. Cavalier, they beat Portmore 2-1. Portmore getting their first defeat of the season. Dunby Holland put four past Arnett Guards who replied with two. No goals between Malines and Harborview. Harborview continued to be in a funk. Falkland falling to Mobe United 1-0. No goals between Mount Pleasant and Vera the Vera uh, United defense stout hearted as usual. And Tivoli, they slide by Waterhouse 1 0. One match week after Waterhouse turned Harborview over, and they fall to Tivoli Gardens. The table looks like this heading into this match week 11. Cavalier and Mount Pleasant, they are setting the pace, just a point separating them. Arnett Gardens and Humble Lion behind them. Harbour View, Dunbar Hold and complete the top six. Outside the top six, Mount Pleasant, uh, Montego Bay United rather, and Portmore on the premises. Then Waterhouse at the bottom two. Falkland and Vere Falkland look decidedly short to compete at this level. And Vere United have been getting by on their defence. And that defence has helped them uh, to mine seven points so far. No wins in the win column, only two winless teams in the tournament or the competition to date. So match week 11, the matchups Mount Pleasant and the Chapleton Maroons, they'll do battle. This fixture between Harborview and Mobe United. Then Tivoli will play Malines United in an old Kasafa clash. Humble Lion and Portmore United meet uh, really two Clarendon teams but let's say Clarendon and St. Catherine because that's what they really are now. Cavalier meet Waterhouse, Vare meet Dunbeholen and Falkland will face the might of Arnett Gardens. Let's hear from Lodo Bernard, the coach of Harborview FC, the defending champions. Coach Bernard, you haven't been getting the results as of late. What do you think you can do to really fix those problems? <laughs> yeah, well, we just have to keep working, you know, and trust the players that we have, because I think we have some good players, probably not getting the right um, cohesion up front. You know, I think we've been guilty of wasted chances. Uh, as much as we have been able to, to create quite a bit, you know, um, but I, before that, however, I think we need to ensure also that defensively we are sound. Well, defensively we were sound last week, you kept a clean sheet, but you mentioned the chances. A lot of averages dictates that eventually they'll start going in. So do you okay. going, are you going to keep confidence in how you're playing or are you going to try and change it up a bit? Yeah, well, we probably would have made a few changes um, in terms of our approach and personnel, you know. But the system, the system that we currently have in place, whether it be any of the two or three formations that we may use, you know, it is devised and designed for us to create opportunities, you know. So it's just sort of the forwards to really just be composed in front of the goal and just control the proceedings thereafter. Well, today you're facing a Montego Bay United team that are known to be a very tough unit. How do you plan to get the better of them specifically? Yeah, well, I really do expect them to be very tough and you know, very difficult to break down. That is something that we would have been aware of um, coming into the week. Um, clearly, there has to be an approach in much the same way that, that Coach Donovan would, you know, would want to approach us. We have had our battles over the years. I know exactly what he's coming with. He knows exactly what I'm coming with. You know, on this occasion, I think probably we would have to be a little bit more smart in terms of trying to get in behind. Lord Lobernard telling Leger Williams about the known knowns as we look at Nicholas Hamilton, the People's Choice Award winner at the recent Sportsman and Sportsman of the Year Glitzy Award ceremony. And the Harborview striker is a dangerous proposition, Leger. Yeah, he really is. He's known to score the spectacular goals. That's why he's in the hearts of the Jamaican people. He hasn't been in the best form as of late, but none of the Harborview strikers have been. He'll be looking to fix those problems today and really get back firing. Nicholas Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton. Uh, winning the award for that cracking goal he scored in the semi-finals of uh, the uh, Premier League last season. Dwayne Ambos, the ex-captain, Premier League winning captain of uh, Montego Bay United, is now on the coaching staff and he spoke with Lish earlier. Coach, it was two disappointing results but you bounced back really well in the last game to get that win. How do you plan to build on that result? Um, it's about us just continuing doing the simple things right in terms of trying to remain compact, um, press, counter press, um, allow the team to play in our system and then punch from there. You mentioned playing in your system and playing how you want to play. Do you think that will be more difficult today against a Harborview well-drilled unit? Um, knowing that what Harborview is known for, they are a team that is um, a lot of running at times, um, trying to counter press us as well as we are trying to counter press them. So we have to be careful in the areas that we lose the football or 
the areas that we want to play in um, to, to counter their system in terms of what their strength are and what their weaknesses. So today should be a game that um, what you would call a ding dang back in terms of two teams trying to cancel out each other and just come here and hopefully we can go home with a positive result. Counter pressing that requires a lot of energy of course. Do you think that because of the heat and the time that we're playing, you're going to have to rein it in a bit today? Uh, we just have to manage the system because you see it's a very open ground. This is a bit windy as well in terms of the heat. We are not used to heat like this coming to Kingston and playing. Um, but we actually play in condition like this because most of our games is 3, 3 p.m. as well. So we just have to manage it, as I said before. All right. Mobe's danger man, Alan Otti, when he came into this league in 2009, he was bald-headed, slim and fast as lightning. He's grown locks now, a little bit heavier, still dangerous though, Lish. Yeah, he still is. He's still going to be carrying the main threat for Montego Bay United. He'll be the one trying to finish off their chances. They'll be looking to stay compact and then really try and play through him. They'll be looking to limit Harborview and he'll be looking to score the goals. Ati are scoring uh, the last two goals that Mobe scored, both from the penalty spot. And yeah, Hati, Otti, whichever fancies you, is going to be dangerous for Mobe United. Break time back with more uh, from uh, the Ashenheim Stadium, Jamaica College's home ground here as we get ready for JPL Match Week 11. purchases in a safe way with Debit MasterCard. Let the passion of football find you everywhere. MasterCard. Start something priceless. Turn your passion into winnings with JustBet. Watch your favorite international leagues and tournaments and get in the game with JustBet. We have the best odds in over 100 sports. Football, basketball, boxing, rugby, motorsports, even virtual matches. Register on the JustBet mobile platform, mobile.justbetja.com or visit one of our over 100 JustBet locations island-wide. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and win big with JustBet. Hey there, look at you. Take a good, long look. What a couple of years it has been. You thought you'd fold, but instead, you're flying. A pandemic, and you're still going. Growing, glowing even. Despite all the downturns and daunting situations, you're still here. Grinding and consistently getting things done with determination and dignity because that is who we are as women. We have proven that we are strong and powerful in every single thing we do. The mothers, the movers, shakers and miracle makers and the many don't often see or acknowledge our contribution. And with all the stereotypes and bias we may face, it's important to tell you because you may not hear it enough. You are bold. You are brave. You are beautiful. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. We thank you for being who you are. Strong, amazing, resilient, passionate, driven nation builders. Jamaican woman, Caribbean woman. You should be proud. You are a force today and every day. And that has been fulfilled. I got a mortgage customized to fit me. Same day pre approval on my loan. Lower mortgage payments, so I have money to do more of the things that matter. Happiness is owning my own crib. Take advantage of our same-day mortgage pre-approval, plus customized financing of up to 100%. And enjoy low monthly payments. Happiness is home. Own it with BMBS. Right now, we have changed everything. Got new apps in a broadcast swing. Beta for HBO Max. For your watch all the movies you like and them series win. Spotify, they have some music lock. Apple Music, make you dance out your back. Prime Brother, you need for the content you seek. 
Advanced Digital LT Brand your way With the Prime Brought a bundle and Jamaica's Number one LT network Activate the Prime Brought a bundle today For as low as 195 Oh my god It's hot here at the Ashadam Stadium on the grounds of Jamaica College on Old Hope Road in St. Andrew. That's where we're playing this Jamaica Premier League game, Match Week 11, Harborview against Montego Bay United. And you heard the Mobe assistant coach, Dwayne Ambrose, they said it's not the, the Mobe boys are not used to these temperatures, not used to playing in climes as hot as this. He's saying it's much cooler on the western end. Well, Harborview will be hoping to turn up the heat even further for the Mobe boys. Their last five meetings, Harborview winning four in the last time. Uh, Nil nil draw then, 3-3, three, 3-0 three. Three for Harborview, Mobe United 2-1. So in the five games, you can Mobe with one win. There were two draws and of course Harborview with two wins. So the stars of the East, the defending Premier League champions, having the better of the head-to-head -head so far. Leach, the point you were making in the pre-game show when you asked Dwayne Ambosley about the conditions and what impact, if any, that is likely to have on their pressing game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, in order to sustain a press at any level, you're going to need so much energy. And it's very hot today. Yes, there is a wind, but at the end of the day, these players are human. They're athletes. So it will tell. Maybe in the first 10 minutes, we'll see a good counter-pressing game from both teams because both teams do like to counter-press and press really high up the field. But I think to sustain that, it will take some physical uh, e expansion from, if, if that's the right word, just from the players. So I think it will be very rough for them to sustain that. So it will be rough. But he will be demanding a lot from his players, Donovan Duki. So it, it will be interesting to see the dynamics of the game in terms of the pressing style and how well either team can keep the ball. Yeah, so the well-traveled ex-soldier, Duki, marshalling his troops from his sedentary position on the sidelines. And he'll be hoping his boys can give him three points again. Uh, plotting with Dwayne Ambos, the man who wore the captain's armband with Mobe United to Premier League success. And it's been a while uh, since these boys have been in with a shout of winning the JPL. Duki says, look, I'm here on a repair mission. I'm starting with young players. I'm going to build something new. For their part, Harborview, I, I found it tough to accept as we look at Clyde Giordini, the general manager for Harborview Football Club, nearest to the camera. He's in the, the bespectacled man in the back, just uh, thumbing the nose there. Uh, Clyde Giordini must have heard us talking about him and his disappointment. I met him after the game the last time at the nil-nil with Mullines United and he was fuming at how wasteful uh, these strikers were as we see Sean Fraser and Ludlow Bernard, Ludlow Bernard in the cap, uh, leading the boys out uh, from uh, the... Uh, relative cool environs of the dressing room as they having a quick word with the referee <laughs> maybe saying well you know Mr. Nation I'd, I'd like you to be lenient with my boys in this <laughs> game today Mr. Nation will say wait that's not my job my job is to enforce the action as I see it or enforce the laws of the game as I see it on the field so I was saying to you that I couldn't believe how weak Waterhouse uh, Harborview were after the they, they started well, but the Waterhouse performance wasn't a bad performance. You and I were there. They missed several chances. They ended up being beaten 4-0. And then it's just not quite, been quite clicking for them as we have to tell the viewers Liz, that we're going to have a late start, a delayed start. Maybe in the next five minutes or so, we'll be on the way. But just a delay to the start of the game as the Harborview team make their way out. But yeah, what has happened to them? What cloud has dimmed the Harborview light? I mean, when things are going good for you, it will continue going good. But And that's what Coach Lauder Bernard has mentioned from the start of the season, winning breeds winning. But when it's going bad, it's, it will just always seem like everything. Or now that they're not scoring goals, it will seem like every single chance they get, their players who were scoring goals beforehand now seem to be all, under all the pressure in the world to finish those chances. And that's never going to really bode well for finishing because finishing, you need confidence, you need, to, you need rep repetition as well. Certain things are going to come with instinct. And when it's not going well for you, it's going to be very difficult for those players to consistently get the ball into the back of the net. And that's what we saw, especially last week in that nil al draw versus Malines. And even in that 4-0 loss, because as you mentioned, they were so good 
in an attacking sense against Waterhouse, but they just couldn't finish the chances. And then when, once you're under the cash in certain instances, it's always going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult for them again today because Montego Bay United are a team that are going to make it hard for them to score. It's going to make it very hard for them to create chances. But it's up to them to really get themselves out of that funk and try and see if they can really push on, start scoring the goals and start getting the results that they so desire. Rather toasty here, as I've mentioned before. And this is the fourth time I'm talking about the heat because it is almost oppressively hot here. Uh, thank God for the breeze that we noted. Very strong. Flags fluttering in the distance as we see Duki giving the last charge uh, to his boys. So where we are now is we're waiting on... Well, how about you? Have, the boys are making their ways... Making their way rather leisurely to the pitch. Mobe are already present. How about you just walking by our commentary position? And as I noted, we may be a five minutes off, five minutes off the scheduled time for this. The gentleman with the bucket, long time, long serving groundsman here at JC. A lot of these Harborview boys will have known would have known him from schoolboy football days. There are many battles here in the colours of the dark blues and against Harborview. Not that visiting schools have had much success here, but this man is a part of the furniture here at Jamaica College and uh, he commands the respect of the footballers at this level. Two young teams, the Harborview team have an average age of 23.7, the oldest man being Ryan Wellington, the captain, at 31 years old. So one man over 30 in the Harborview starting 11, Ryan Wellington at 31. So 23.7, the average age of the Harborview starting 11. And then the Montego Bay starting 11, even younger, 21.8 is the average age of the Mo Bay boys. Alanotti, the grandfather of the team, at the ripe old age of 30. It just shows you uh, the youth that Donovan Duki has to work with. And the mission ahead of him is to keep them in the league this year. And uh, let's see if we can invest in uh, the squad next year to supplement what we have here with the best of the talent available from outside Jamaica. I say outside Jamaica because... Harborview, well, Mo Moby United rather, are starting with a man, an Englishman in their side, Brian Mankumbani, who's eligible to also play international football for the Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, Harborview, uh, Montego Bay United rather, have had the veritable United Nations of coaches serving them in recent past. Who can forget the gentleman, Ricky Singh. They've had a Somalian, they've had a Peruvian, they've had various nationalities try their hand at success with this team, Montego Bay United. It's a Jamaican now who's leading the charge, Donovan Duki. All right, so the formalities are just starting up. Mr. Music Man has found his playlist. <laughs> and in short order, we'll be ready for this kickoff. O'Shea Nation, the man in the middle. Gonna put up starting lineups for you anytime now. No, no. Referee Moshe Nation, assisted by Damian Williams, Ricardo McKenzie. Alexi Perry is the fourth official this afternoon. Both captains, Wellington and the goalkeeper, Devoni Burton, at, th at, uh, at 21 years old. He's the skipper uh, for this Mobe United selection this afternoon. All right, here we go with the starting 11s. So how of you have Anthony Bennett in goal, 18-year-old goalkeeper Ryan Wellington, O'Shane Staple, Orderland Harding, Joshua Anglin, Kimar Mullings up front, Romain Brackenridge, Nicholas Hamilton, Kasim Priestley, Timar Lewis and Agina Talbot for head coach Lotto Bernard Colorado Murray, relegated to the bench after he has been drawing only blanks in recent weeks. The formation which this is what how of you say they will play to start with. Yeah, I'm not really sure if that's going to be it. Maybe it's just a a small change but we'll see what they will do in the end but look forward for those front three to really try and get in and amongst the goals in and around the box box and try and create opportunities 
for Mobe. We see Kevin Graham in at the shot there. Veteran defender who follows coach Donovan Ducky wherever he goes. Devoni Burton in goal, the captain. Kevin Graham, Devon Turner, Brian Mankumbani uh, from England via the Democratic Republic of Congo. Devro McKenzie, Tevin Shaw, Ronaldo Wellington, Courtney Allen, Johan Weatherly, Alan Otti, and Shavan McDonald. And this is how they say they'll line up, Lish. Yeah, Montego Bay United look forward for Weatherly, Allen and Otti to really try and create chances. A lot of dynamic play and a lot of dynamic pressing from Mobe United is expected. Let's see how they can get the game underway All right, in and these on, conditions. Underway we are here at the Ashenheim Stadium, Jamaica College's home ground. And, uh, Getting his first touch for Mobe. Mobe going the wrong way for the moment. Let's see what effect the strong breeze has on how the ball behaves. I think we'll see a lot of changes in terms of how set pieces are delivered because of this win. Really have to be drilled into the box. No more real floaty deliveries. But on the other hand, the floaty deliveries could, could cause a lot of problems for the defenses if they can't deal with them initially. Yep, could be tricky. No, 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 no. Early touch for Allen. And an early touch for Otti, shattered by Talbot. Alan Otti had his hand, had his hand, oh no, had his ankle nipped by Talbot. Mm -hmm. A lecture from Shane Nation, even though he was fouled. Nation taking early steps to keep. The temperature's cool on this hot afternoon. He's given the free kick though. Uh, Courtney Allen interested in it. So too is Devereaux McKenzie. And Overland Harding just covering the ball and ensuring they don't take the free kick quickly. Ordered to retreat. Meanwhile, Talbot and company are organizing the Harborview defense as they try to fend off this free kick in the third place. Look up. Look up, see your right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rooney, you have ready, Rooney, you have ready, bro. Mackenzie with the center. Oh, Talbot was there, and a good job he was because Courtney Allen was lurking, just waiting, praying for Talbot to miss that header, and he would have been in business. But good defending from the Harbour View, man. Nice and alert. Yeah, and that's what I was speaking about in terms of the deliveries. They have to really be whipped in can't really float them in and it already caused some danger for Harborview. Here's Mackenzie once again. Five Mobe United men in the box and one poised to join late if there's a melee. Here's Mackenzie. Graham points to where he wants the ball played. Meet and drink for goalkeeper Anthony Bennett but it's a goal kick because the ball bent outside and so Null and void. Harborview give the ball away straight back from the kick. Here's Otti once again. Some early touches for him. Talbot with another clearance. And he's trying to settle the game now, but pause because the ball has picked up a puncture. In for a fresh one. Nation checks it. It's good. Back we are on the way. Racking Ridge now for Harborview. I've looked lifeless in the last three or so rounds or three match weeks of this Jamaica Premier League. Started with the oomph of champions. But they've just hit a brick wall. Mind you, one of their most important pieces no longer with them, Trayvon Reed, contracted out of the country. Seem to really be missing his ability to unlock defenses. Oh, on the stretch there was Navon Turner. And a good skill from goalkeeper Burton. 
to avoid catching at first contact. Not giving away any free kicks. Good low. Sheltering from the sun as the ball breaks to Tamara Lewis. For a moment he thought of the shot, then he did eventually get the shot off by the time he popped it. It was blocked. And that's the indecisiveness that I spoke of in terms of finishing and how difficult it will be for them to gain back that sharpness if they're not scoring goals. Tamara Lewis definitely should have had a pop one time there. Nicholas Hamilton off the chest of Lewis and he was very well policed by Kevin Graham. Almost put it off it so that his goalkeeper Devoni Burton could gather. Tamara Lewis again getting involved but just couldn't get the one really under his spell to get a shot off. Otis pass is good. Weatherly checks in back on the right foot. Blocked. Weatherly. Safe hands of Bennett. Those long ones again. Look at the ball. Just hanging in the breeze. Watched every step of the way. By Kevin Graham. Well, by never one turner rather. Graham was the one who effected the last clearance. It's a throw to Harbour View high up in the Mobe United half of the pitch. Duki showing well unflinching in this blazing sun. As Priestley plays another glorious pass out wide. Tracked well though. The ball intended for Woodland and Hardy. Mobe trying to be very competitive. That was Tavin Shaw just hurrying. Harding to ensure he couldn't gather and settle. Shot from Hamilton. Straight at Burt though. Gathers easily. He's looked very confident to start the game, but Harborview have started the game well in terms of really creating chances. Hamilton, they, sorry. Go ahead. They have been getting shots off, but they really haven't been of the right quality so far. Harborview. I was about to say that Hamilton looked rather smart in his suit at the Sportsman Sportsman of the Year Awards on Friday night, Friday evening. Rather impressive jacket he was wearing and looked pleased as punch to collect an award for a goal that was deserving of winning a game of the magnitude that it ended up winning. Really good element to the Sportsman Sportsman of the Year Awards that the organizers, the RGR Sports Foundation, have added. I have to give them a plug because those are the things we like to see. Mullings chasing this one. But gets no change out of the defense. So we're in the eighth minute. If anything, the wind is helping Mobe and being a hindrance to Harborview. A couple of long balls pumped by the Harborview defenders, which has been hanging. Speak of that. Look at that. Look at what happened there. Yep, ball almost like a frisbee. They'd best be advised, Lish, to keep keep this football on the ground. <laughs> Anglin to Brackenridge. Anglin once again has looked solid in the midfield since returning to Harborview from a stint in the US. Just showing Anglin. Here's Harding trying to curl to find Mullings, met by Kevin Graham. And Allen trying to find Otti. Talbot ensure that O'Shea Nation saw that he was being manhandled and he's won the free kick it is going to be difficult for Ati at times today because of the fact that he will be coming up against three centre backs and it's just him so he will need support from his teammates especially the, the line of three that are playing directly behind him you'll also see angling and the ball here dropping deep to create a, a back four at times 
So it will be difficult for the Mobe United striker Ati to really get a footing in this game, especially on the transition. His younger brother played for Mobe United at the start of last season, but got injured. We didn't see him again. That was Alaric. So here's Harborview's corner. Tomorrow, Lewis. Seem to be having a problem with a couple of the footballs. The players not trusting a few, so they've tossed them away and asked for replacements. Lewis is using this replacement for this corner kick. 11th minute. Can Harborview find a goal? Lewis's corner! Oh, it's bundled away! Hamilton! It's blocked! Mass defending from well, the mass ranks of the Mobe United defence, keeping that one out. And the man is injured. The referee calls for assistance from the Mobe United bench. And I think that's a very brave man. It seems as if he's the one who blocked Hamilton's shot. A goal-bound effort. And it was, it was indeed putting his body on the line. Trying to preserve this early clean sheet. I'm trying to see if it's Kevin Graham. Maybe him, you know. He's a tough guy in this Mobe United defense as Hamilton walks away, shaking his head ruefully. That man giving nothing away. He could play poker in Las Vegas and he wouldn't need shades, <laughs> Ludlow Bernard. Both of these coaches, really. Yep. Calm, calm figures. It's yeah, because they've been around, seen it, done that. So yeah, it, it was Kevin Graham, and it takes a lot to put Kevin Graham on the canvas. But this shot from Nicholas Hamilton, look at him, just keeping away from the challenge, and that's a goal-saving uh, shot. You believe a goal-saving block, you believe, even though there were men there, but the ball was traveling. And we know that Nicholas Hamilton, when he's kicking through the ball, he kicks it pure. And it was no different from even inside the six-yard box there, opted not to go for placement, as you shouldn't do from that close in when you're trying to power it in. But the block was crucial, and it was a goal-saving block, kept as keep, has kept the score at nil all in this one. Kevin Graham, you can find him on Instagram. His name is Cooley Humble. Nice guy. And a warrior. This ball just ricocheting just past our commentary point. And the players are actually waiting for it, you know. Because again, well, as I said, the, 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 the batch that they're using for today's game, a couple of them are uh, need, need some inflation. So it looks as, as if they found their, the one that they like, so yeah. they're not going to want to let that one go. <laughs> they found the preferred ball. under pressure and even if he didn't get that kick I still think he would have given away the corner the ball not sitting for him in the wind albeit the wind has died down it died down in the instant when he was trying to control but yeah the ball a live wire an elastic band has been given to Devro McKenzie to tie someone's hair as we look at Donovan Duki and I'm waiting to see if my cameraman can help me to see who will get this elastic band elastic band from McKenzie has it on his hand he's going to deliver it at this earliest opportunity you see him affixing it to the right wrist let's see who gives after this Allen with the corner Graham tried to meet it at the near post nice touch by Allen once again Oh, better from Graham. Here's Weatherly. Weatherly's in! Ooh, can see what he was trying to do. Trying to aim for a post. I don't know if he was trying to bend it. Whatever it is, the technique wasn't quite right. But you could see his eyes lit, uh, light up for a moment. The eyes lit up for a moment. You could see them light up. But the execution of the shot wasn't the best. And I'm sure his teammate Ati would be saying, why? Why not just pass it across the goal? I was there free at the back post. But it was a... A decent effort. Any attacker, as he said, he, he, his eyes would have lit up, seen the space, but his execution just wasn't there for that one. The pitch here at the Ashenheim Stadium, rather dry. It is. The grass, more brown than green. The surface must be for the players to contend with 
the sun sapping whatever moisture would have been in it overnight. And it's an it's a interesting one because when you speak about the surface, if it's a dry surface, usually you expect more long balls to be played. But because of the, 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 un, the uncertainty of the wind, you can't really be playing those long balls over the top because it's not going to get its, to its preferred destination, one might say, as we see one right now. Priestly yeah. spearing that forward and O'Shane Staple acknowledging the intent, but Priestley's half pint measure not quite precise. And so said, so done. It's going to be difficult for those balls to be played over the top in the air, but at the same time, it's going to be difficult for the balls to be played on the ground because of the surface. So it's going to be an interesting one over these two games. Otty shielding his hands with his eyes as we see Harborview having 53% of the ball. Hamilton has had that blocked shot. Timara Lewis had a blocked effort, but to be fair, the greater threat has come from the Mobe team, the team in the orange and blue. Talbot to his skipper, Wellington. Goes long. Can he find Mullings? No. Here's Shaw to Allen. Nice touch. Bursting forward is Mobe United. Allen takes it in his stride. Allen! Oh, he cleared the crossbar when Allen Otty wanted it played to his feet. And not for the first time, Otty is saying, why not just slip me in? Why not just pass it across the goal? And for the second time, his teammate on that right-hand side has opted for something else. The ball just bubbled up at the last second, I think. Yeah, I was going to say that. His first touch was excellent, though, because his body wasn't quite set for the pass, but he still cushioned it and turned in the same motion, Courtney Allen. But then, uh, to, to be fair to him, he wanted to pass it on the floor, but the ball didn't allow him to do that. And the surface here, as we've been uh, telling you, bone dry. And with the wind, the ball misbehaved. Hamilton in midfield. Nice pile to get away from, too. Priestley crowded out in the middle. And here's one of the Wellington twins for Mobe United. Overran it just a little bit. And it comes to Mankumbani. Trying to find Weatherly. Weatherly. Saying he had his ankle tapped. And the referee agrees with him. Johan, son of Dr. Dean Weatherly. Cornell College fame, Seba fame, Mount, uh, Montego Bay United fame. He's now 24 years old, well, 26 years old, Johan Weatherly. Back to help his boyhood team reclaim lost glories. Here's Harding, tracked by Turner, policed well by Turner, albeit at the expense of a corner. Devon Turner, 24 years old, playing as a centre back today. He's played every position for Mobe United since they returned to the top flight, except goalkeeper. Last two season, he was midfielder. He was a forward in a couple of the games when they were short up front. A player that the coaches seem to like, seems to have a good technical understanding of the game. And he's part of a Mobe team that, short of stars, but big on heart and everybody accepts that it's a rebuilding project from here this is Jashawn Anglin away, away. to the back post oh it's met by Staple he's appealing for handball Priestley well, Lewis trying to work the angle for the cross he did have the angle for the cross but he decided against it and then he was thwarted it's really fine margins you have to be able to get those balls in really quickly and that's a risky pass back <laughs> to his a keeper but good technical work by thank god he had goal. time hamilton comes deep to retrieve and devero mckenzie thought he had taken the ball but there was a fault david Shaw had clipped to the heels of nicholas hamilton plays the ball for the tomorrow lewis He's in the box. He goes, takes a top, but just outside. Still alive for Harborview, though. Mullings. 
forced away by Turner. This is Hamilton. Can he find the cross? Oh, it's better the near post by Wellington. Good defensive clearance. Danger was lurking behind him. Didn't quite know what was there, so he took the safety first option of turning it behind for the corner. And it was very well that he did because, as he said, danger was there. So it had to be done as Harbivy have taken this one short. Lewis trying to manufacture the shot. Well done by Priestley. Lewis. Very left footed. And the defenders know that he'll always try to work back onto his left foot. And they're wise to that. Shot on target. He's dribbling. Oh, it dribbles right in. How about you have followed the back of the net? In the 21st minute, didn't have a lot of venom, but there was a deflection on it. And it just drifted away from the goalkeeper, almost happening in slow motion. And that man Talbot has come up trumps. Here he is, finding himself just on the edge of the 18, and the deflection wrong-footing the keeper. Yeah, it came off Kevin Graham, and Burton just couldn't claw it away despite his despairing dive. 1-0 to the defending champions. Well, Harborview have been struggling in front of goal. They decided to put an extra centre back on the field to get control. But what does he come up and do? Score a goal, and that's a very important goal for Harborview. Talbot, it was a shot. It wasn't very venomous. But that's what you have to do. You have to get lucky sometimes, especially when you're under a slump. And he'll be feeling really good in this water break now after giving his team the lead and Harborview needed that slice of luck it's come and after missing clear-cut opportunities for weeks on end it's a center back with a lucky scruffy finish that has given them the lead here now against Montego Bay United yep so the defending champions have found the lead cue the water break ordered by the referee given the oppressively hot conditions here at the Ashenine Stadium and Harborview the drinks will be even more refreshing for the Mobe United boys it will almost be almost as if they're having tea in the hot sun here by virtue of that goal Kevin Graham did get just flicked out his right boot and it did take a deflection that little little touch little deflection caused that Davoni Burton to not be able to get across. He saw him scrambling. He went for it. Just couldn't claw it away. But even with that being said, George, I think that Burton was a little bit too much on that side of the goal in the first place when the shot was being taken. So when the deflection took place, because the ball still didn't even find a corner, I think if he was a little bit more central in the goal, it would have then allowed him to be in a better position to save the shot just because of how slow it was moving. I always tell people that goals goalkeepers rather their saves 70 percent is down to their positioning if you're starting from the wrong place you could be superman you're not going to get uh, two shots either side of you and yeah i have to agree with you there burton made his life difficult by drifting to his left we all saw talbot wind up the shot and then kevin uh, kevin graham's deflection didn't help him all right so back we are to live play Talbot, the goal scorer, heads that one away. Nice touch by Lewis. Deep. Hardy. Rare to see players with their shorts tucked in, uh, shirts tucked into their shorts. Harding is playing that way. Maybe he wants to be different. Here's Alanotti. Lisa to Wellington. That's Shavon McDonald. Wearing the number 16 shirt and uh, unsuccessfully ex Cornell College schoolboy, Cornell College captain as well, bright young man. And his future will be bright, whatever it is that he chooses to stick with you, believe. Here he is, Wellington. Duki only using one of the twins from the start today, but they've turned it over Harborview. This is Mullings need pass to Hamilton need support trying to walk around the Nevon Turner challenge trying to buy the free kick but Turner gives it away to Staple Staple can't go forward so he goes back with safety Talbot now Anglin 
This will settle Harborview, you believe. Booming pass to Orderland Harding. Short side to Hamilton. Hamilton's first touch, way too heavy. And he's crossed with himself, Nicholas Hamilton. Control that, a bit like Romelu Lukaku. <laughs> you would know all about that one, GD, but <laughs> at the very least, Harborview now have a corner. But Wantigo Bay won't be this too disheartened by conceding that goal because they have played well, they have created chances. But Harborview will be over the moon with getting the lead. They're looking to extend it with this corner. Well, it, 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 it isn't so much the lead, Liz. You said it earlier, it's the goal. They haven't had a goal in a long time. So just the fact of getting a goal. No matter how they get it. Yeah, they, they'll be bouncing. They'll be buoyant. Here's Anglin with this corner to the near post. That was Shane Steeper got a piece of. Anyway, Priestley from distance, winding up the shot. But listen, for a boy that has the, the, the kicking ability that Kasim Priestley has, he doesn't score plenty. If I could kick like him, I wouldn't be commentating. I'll be playing football somewhere. <laughs> he, he, he should be scoring a lot of goals. He has the technique to die for. But just never quite gets it right, Kasim Priestley. It's just, a, it's just the consistency of those shots. You know, ball, ball striking is something that I've spoken about at length. Yeah. But in terms of, there's a difference between being a quality ball striker and then having the consistency to con to do it all the time. And that's what really separates the really good players from the not so or the average ones. Not that I'm calling my average player, but just in terms of his ball striking, he can let him down sometimes. Here's Hamilton waiting for Harding to give him the decoy run. Finds his way into the box. Not clear yet. And it and it gives away the corner. Well, there's a problem that I think the officials will have to address at halftime though because we're only using one ball. We only have one ball active. So no, no matter how far the ball goes off the field, play has to wait until the ball is retrieved. I feel like I'm commentating in the 1990s. <laughs> so the, the officials need to cure that so we have replacement footballs to keep the action ticking over. Anyway, that's not Anglin's problem. He has the football and he's taking this corner. Near post once again. This one off the head of Turner. Talbot. Beaten to it by Johan Weatherly. And uh, Oshane Nation says it's Moby Ball. Twenty eighth minute. boy has a replacement at his feet but that's punctured they, they say that's soft Weatherly trying to hit Otty he's offside Alan Otty starred in the same high school team as Fabian McCarthy the Don't Behold in general and with St. James High they ripped schoolboy football apart that season and he's been a Premier League champion with Mobile United in his early days he was the fastest player in the Premier League, easily. Not in that kind of shape anymore, but not many defenders would fancy their chances against Alan Otti in a foot race, and Merlin enjoys Otti. I mean, all the Ottis are related from St. James or from that side of the island. Merlin was a Hanoverian. Yeah, outside of your shot, good spot, Lish. The in the Frank Hall Gymnasium here at the JC ground. Gentlemen over there, furiously pumping up some footballs. So I guess we're back to full complement pretty soon. As again, this big diagonal trying to hit Harding, but Talbot. I'm wondering if he's cross with himself or he's saying Harding should have gone earlier. Whichever way, it didn't work. But how have you have tried that play? We're in the 29th minute, about six times so far. There it is, that the replacement balls are getting worked on. Good spot, Lish. And thank you for that, Mr. Director. McDonald to Weatherly. Weatherly tracked by Staple. Gave Staple some. And a voila. There. Well, there's a replacement on the field quickly. So, yeah. 
We're back, we're, we're back up to normalcy now, Lish. Thankfully. Remember the olden days where you could kick the ball away and take a three minute break as, they, as it was searched for? Those days long gone as Wellington meets this header. Kevin Graham. McDonald. Weatherly bursting into space down this left hand side. Does he keep it in? No, the assistant on the on the assistant on the near side says no. I want to say good afternoon to the Mobe United fans watching our broadcast. I know Paul Reed is watching. Does he ever miss a Mobe United game? Or any game involving any team from the West? I don't think so. Talbot has Wellington told Harding to pay attention. They wanted to give him that ball quickly, but he wasn't in the right position and the pass was delayed. As we see Mullings doing well to keep it. Priestley angling there, knocking it about now, Harborview. Hamilton has flitted between the outside left channel to midfield, trying to pull the Mobe United defenders with him. Priestley gives it away though, and Shaw direct to Otti. His touch to McDonald. Didn't see a pass he liked, so he switches play to Allen. Harding has to work defensively. Oh, Shaw's pass was poor. And he's given the ball away. Here's Lewis to Hamilton. And the pass forward was hit with too much pace. Really picked up speed of the tough surface here at the Ashnam Stadium. Hamilton couldn't get there. A string of loose passes by both teams. Yes. Allen. Clipped by Harding who may have stepped on his hand in the follow-through. And that's why he's showing some concern, saying, oh, I didn't mean that, man, it was an accident. Here's the play, Tavin Shaw to Allen. Well, Mackenzie, and then there goes Allen. Yeah, all right. Courtney Allen, he's 24-year-old. Again, one of the under uh, the 20 plus brigade that Mobe are working with at this level. Johan Weatherly, double teamed. The ball is alive. How of you can come out of their defensive shape now? Through Hardy. Hamilton now. Right weight of pass. Priestley. Looking for staple wide. But instead, Hamilton plays the ball to Staple Wide. Oh, and he took his eye off it just for a minute. Apologizes. Don't think Ludlow Bernard sees the funny side of that. <laughs> Shane Staple has been a, a great servant of this Harborview team since his emergence at this level. Again, poker face. If you're going to Vegas to play poker, you can let Ludlow Bernard teach you the poker face expressions. You'll be in business. You spoke about the Mobe press. We're in the 33rd minute. It's devilishly hot, Leger. The press is, is in their pockets right now. It's not, it's not, it's not being shown. Yeah, it's, it's non-existent, and that's, that was always going to happen. But I think Carboview are doing a really good job of, you know, slowing down the game and making it, being, making it very difficult for them. You can see Anglin on the ball now dropping deep. Timar Lewis dropping deep from attacking midfield. And then the three centre-backs can just cycle it around with the two defensive midfielders that three two shape so it's always going to be difficult for any team to press harborview in this shape specifically so especially in this heat now it will be very hard for Montego bay united devro mckenzie couldn't keep navon turner's pass on the field harborview have targeted this right hand side of the mobile united defense hamilton and harding have won several corners down this side have looked threatening down this side and they've attacked more on the right side of the Mobe United defence than they have the left side. So obviously they think that the weak link is on the Mobe right. Anglin goes again to the Mobe right. This time Harding takes a nice first touch. It's blocked though by Mackenzie. 
Priestley now. Back to Hardy. Can he get the cross right this time? Lewis. Whips the cross in. Oh! Behind Mullings, he's stretched together. Too far behind him, though. Yeah, that one missed everyone. It was a good idea, though. Speaking of good ideas, that ball had a good idea written all over it, but Weatherly just couldn't get onto that one. He was across again by Lewis. It's a good cross, you know. Good cross. I think Kevin Graham may have gotten another deflection, and this one uh, took it away from Kamara Morning. So that was the good deflection. Not of the kind that helped Talbot's shot to beat his goalkeeper earlier. Can't blame him. He was trying to block and unlucky to just get the deflection. Anglin trying to be too cute in the midfield and robbed. He's apologizing to Sean Anglin as Brackenridge tries to push Harborview up the field. This is Lewis. Look how deep he's dropping to orchestrate the play. And he can't hit the table wide on the Harborview right. Love to take by McDonald in the midfield. This is Tavin Shaw now. But here's McDonald. That was Mount. They're trying to hit Weatherly. Two tall figures, Mankumbani and Shavad McDonald. Different in stature to that man, Johan Weatherly. Short, stocky, fast. As we see Hamilton. Got the back heel wrong. Allen now trying to play Otti in the channel. At Otti frustrated. And he looked at me as if he heard me say that he was frustrated. Yes, Alan, that's what I said. And you have a right to me because the balls aren't coming into the channels to you. Donovan Duki demanding more of his players. Here's a staple. On the runner, Shane Staple. Still staple. Can he dig the cross out? Was trying to lay it on for Kamara Mullings. Good block by Kevin Graham once again. Anglin flicked away by Turner Hardy back to his skipper for the first time Duki crossed with his Mobe United team he's having some strong words with them and Harborview win yet another corner the corner count should be ridiculously high this time Hamilton will take the corner to the back post oh it's met by was that Talbot again yes it was whether they're trying to break with Mobe United and he gives it away. Rash decision by Johan Weatherly. Mobe works so hard to get the ball back. And when they do, it's difficult to accept that it's given away so easily, given back so easily. This is Anglin. How about you carrying themselves like the team with the one they lead and they are? As I said, no. Duki really laying into a couple of his players, remonstrating with men on the defensive end. Anglin's dummy works as Wellington trying to hit O'Shane Stip with the booming diagonal. Does he find him? Yes, he does. Good pass. Good defending, though, from Mankumbani. Thirty-ninth minute, Anglin to Harding. Harding's cross. Right at the back post by Mambunkani. Well, Mankumbani, who heads it behind for another corner to Harborview. So this is Harborview's eighth corner. 
and we haven't played 40 minutes yet. Tamar Lewis spears this one to the near post. It's met by Turner. And Weatherly doesn't have any support. What does he do? Oh. He's taken out though. And there'll be a yellow card. The first of the game, Jashon Anglin. Didn't need to do that, Anglin. No, he didn't. Weatherly was going nowhere, had no support. So that's a really rash tackle by Anglin. And in the heart of the midfield, getting a yellow card is very difficult to see what the rest of the game with. He would take away your aggression. But he's a smart player, a wise player. So let's see how he maneuvers from here. But that wasn't a very wise decision. You know, it's one of the things that we always say as commentators, a player getting a yellow card early, that they have to watch their step. It's, it's rare when a player gets two yellow cards in a game like that. Paul is saying, Joshua Anglin must watch his step. Here's McDonald. Mankumbani. There's been a hint of handball there, but he continues. Mankumbani. Finds Weatherly! Pen it behind it. Could only parry it. And he's helped by his defenders. So Mobe is showing some thrust. Wellington. Shaw beaten to it. Lovely touch by Kasim Priestley. And here he goes once again, Priestley. Hamilton in front of him. Spread into space for Hamilton. Nicholas Hamilton. Wrong decision. Felt he should have tried to cut on it, curl on his left foot. As we see Weatherly here, snapshot. But it couldn't gather it. And cleared by his captain Wellington. And then yeah, I felt he should have gone outside. Because the defenders, there were defenders there and the goalkeeper as well, reading his intentions. Graham gave it away but cleaned up his own mess. Here's Matt Lallard. Not a good pass to Man Kumbani. And he's frustrated with himself, Shavad Matt as that ball goes behind. Well, it goes out for a throw. 42nd minute. The teams for the second game. I see Waterhouse in the building. Well, in the house. You just couldn't help yourself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Here they are. The locks the read, make him out. And uh, a couple of the others. They're here for the, the second game. Here's Joshua Monangli lining up this free kick for water for Harborview rather in the 43rd minute, a game in which they are leading the defending champions. Can they increase that lead before the interval? Anglin's free kick met by Wellington further by Otti and Weatherly once again looks up doesn't see any help and that's been Mobe's problem when the ball breaks to them deep and the Ball handler looks up. There's usually nobody in an orange and blue shirt. And, and that's what I spoke about earlier in terms of Ati being really isolated against three centre backs. It's never going to help just lumping the ball forward to him. So they have to look through in the midfield. And if there's nothing open, it's going to be difficult for them to transition the way that they want to. So it's been very good tactically by Harborview so far today. Son has forced me to abandon my seat at the commentary point. It isn't the players alone that are feeling the oh, rest yes. of the heat. Here's Talbot. Harborview toying with it at the back. Why not? They're saving energy. They have the lead again. They look for Harding wide. But he had come in field. 
but he still runs by Devereux McKenzie to gather possession. Not good defending for the Mobe man who snaps back, but he gives the ball away to Priestley. Can he dig the cross out? Nice back heel to Hardy. All the way back in defense to Talbot. I don't know who Talbot was looking for. Hamilton acknowledges the attempt, even though that ball really wasn't intended for him. They say we should expect two minutes of time to be added to the first 45. And on the strength of what we've seen over the intervening period, Lige, uh, how are you fully deserving of this 1-0 lead? I wouldn't say fully deserving. Um, I think Mobe United have had some good opportunities. Harborview have had some as well. I think a draw going into the break would have been fair, but Harborview, no matter how it went in, it went in. So they took one of their chances. Mobe haven't taken any of theirs. So it depends how you want to look at it. But I think the game has been rather even so far, in some aspects at least. Lewis, trying to find Mullings. Ball ill-directed. Burt. His goal kick doesn't beat Jashon Anglin! Sent it back with interest. But my anticipation of what the damage could be from the shot was greater than the damage caused by the shot. Weatherly beaten in the air, no surprise. Couple of good touches by Wellington though, but then he gives it away after doing so much hard work. Here's Anglin now. Hamilton. Rolls the challenge from Tavin Shaw. Tries to find Oda and Harding. That was the pass. The execution was nice pick by Otti. And here's Johan Weatherly. Bursting into the into the box. Weatherly puts the cross in. And I don't know why, because there was no one there. When he was dribbling, you didn't see him lift his head up to look. He hit the ball into the space in hope more than anything else. And he gives away possession there. A promising situation breaks down for Mobe United with no blood drawn from the Harbour View defence. Harbour View can take their time building from the back. And referee O'Shea Nation has seen enough. Two minutes added to the opening 45 minutes have expired. And at half time, Harborview, the defending champions, are leading Montego Bay United. One nil courtesy of a goal from that man, Ajini Talbot. A deflection from uh, Kevin Graham's attempt uh, to block his shot. And it just dribbled away from the despairing dive of uh, the Mobe United goalkeeper, Davone Burton. So at the break, Donovan Duke's men are trailing. They are in deficit. One nil is the scoreline. Harborview leading Mobe United. Match week 11, first half action in the Jamaica Premier League. Debit MasterCard. Let the passion of football find you everywhere. MasterCard. Start something priceless. Right now we have changed up with thing. Brand new apps in a broadcast swing. Data for HBO Max. For your watch all the movies you like and them series win. Spotify there so the music last. Apple Music make you dance out your back. Brand brother you need for the content you see. Fans digital LD. Brand new way. With the Prime Brata Bundle and Jamaica's number one LTE network. Activate the Prime Brata Bundle today for as low as $1.95. Oh my God! Turn your passion into winnings 
with JustBet. Watch your favorite international leagues and tournaments and get in the game with JustBet. We have the best odds in over 100 sports, football, basketball, boxing, rugby, motorsports, even virtual matches. Register on the JustBet mobile platform, mobile.justbetja.com or visit one of our over 100 JustBet locations island-wide. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and win big with JustBet. I got a mortgage customized to fit me. Same day pre approval on my loan. Wow! Lower mortgage payments, so I have money to do more of the things that matter. Happiness is owning my own crib. Take advantage of our same day mortgage pre approval plus customized financing of up to 100% and enjoy low monthly payments. Happiness is home. Own it with BMBS. Yeah, so we are at the Ashenheim Stadium where we've seen the first half of this match week 11 JPL clash between Harborview, the defending champions, and Montego Bay United Kings and Anson Andrew. Well, St. Andrew versus St. James, where for your Shane Nation sent us off a little bit behind uh, the scheduled start time. But immediately, Harborview looked dangerous. Nicholas Hamilton, one of our three left footed attempts by him. This opportunity of the right foot that was blocked by the stomach of Kevin Graham. Goalbound effort through a crowd of players. And then this was a chance for Moby. Johan Weatherly driving wide of the right hand post. Looked closer than it actually was right beneath our commentary position. So we could have seen it clearly. And then look at Courtney Allen and the bubble at the end. He wanted to lay it down before Alan Otti, but the bubble caused his shin to make contact with it and that's why it lifted so grotesquely over the bar then Ajini Talbot on the edge of the 18 yard box and the shot taking a little deflection dribbling beyond the reach of goalkeeper Davoni Burton and the two centre halves combining for Harborview there because the assist belongs to Romain Brackenridge whose fancy flick found Ajini Talbot and his shot the beating the bird. Weatherly again, this time off the left foot, straight at goalkeeper Anthony Bennett. Too hot for him to hold, but his defence helped him to clear his lines. And Priestley sending Hamilton away. Look at Hamilton. And rather than go outside, he went inside, slipped, and the play broke down. that seven shots between both teams seven, two on target for Harborview one on target for Mobile United of course one of the shots on target for Harborview led to that goal nine fouls between both teams one yellow card for Harborview that going to angling no red card so far one offside seven corners for Harborview they're really getting a lot of them some good deliveries as well one shot one shot has had to be saved by either goalkeeper so far 55% possession to the 45% of Bay United for Harborview and the possession has told and it has given Harborview the lead. It's 1-0 over Mobile United at half time and we'll be returning for the second half shortly. Hey there, look at you. Take a good, long look. What a couple of years it has been. You thought you'd fold, but instead, you're flying. A pandemic, and you're still going, growing, glowing even, despite all the downturns and daunting situations. You're still here grinding and consistently getting things done with determination and dignity because that is who we are as women. We have proven that 
we are strong and powerful in every single thing we do. The mothers, the movers, shakers and miracle makers, and the many don't often see or acknowledge our contribution. And with all the stereotypes and bias we may face, it's important to tell you because you may not hear it enough. You are bold, you are brave, you are beautiful. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. We thank you for being who you are. Strong, amazing, resilient, passionate, driven nation builders. Jamaican woman, Caribbean woman. You should be proud. You are a force today and every day. And that has been fulfilled. it again he got two wickets in his first over against the Sixers the other night and Matty Short missed out with the back already taken a wicket and now taken one of the best catches at first slip you'll ever see look at that he's a tall man he used all that but look at the athleticism the timing the one hand up, that's behind him, Radar, when he accepts that. This will be great vision. Oh, wow. Hang time. Right there in Utah, Jordan Clarkson. Look at this. Oh, that is just filthy. Wow. Scooping back and scoring. Behind the free kick. Richard's goal! It has to be him! He is no ordinary whisper! His ability from the dead ball or what he has pulled off, but that one was from the top draw. Rose maybe giving a little bit too much towards his near post, and Richard found the gap. 30 on the season for Dijon Richard. NBA continues on Monday. Atlanta Hawks against the Chicago Bulls. 8 p.m., 9 p.m. ECT on Sportsman. Fear you're missing out? Don't miss another event with Sportsmax. Enjoy full live content on our YouTube channel. Keep up to date with all things sports. Rewatch highlights of your favorite zone moments. Join our community and share in the passion of sports viewers everywhere. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Sportsmax YouTube channel today. for Champions League returns February 14 on your home of champions live on Sportsmax and Sportsmax 2. Join the growing number of scene subscribers and keep in touch with everything from the Caribbean, including the ISA schoolboy football season, exclusive from Jamaica. Call your cable operator and ask for Scene TV via Optimum in the Northeast US market and Bell & Rogers in Canada or come straight to the source at www.scene.tv and pay $4.99 a month. Be at home, away from home. Subscribe today.
You're watching the Jamaica Premier League on your home of champions. <laughs> Fear you're missing out? Don't miss another event with Sportsmax. Enjoy full live content on our YouTube channel. Keep up to date with all things sports. Rewatch highlights of your favorite zone moments. Join our community and share in the passion of sports viewers everywhere. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Sportsmax YouTube channel today. You wait for Champions League returns February 14 on your home of champions live on Sports Max and Sports Max 2. You're watching the Jamaica Premier League on your home of champions. The JPL lives on Sports Max. Sports Max will have Cavalier and Waterhouse. That's this afternoon, 5.30 p.m. in Jamaica. That's the kickoff time. Then on Monday, Veer United against the Dunder Holden. Monday, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. outside Jamaica. Then on Monday as well, 7.30 p.m., the big game, Arnett Gardens and Falkland. Sports Max 2, both games being played, or to be played, at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. So we're back at Ashenheim Stadium, home of Jamaica College. Located on Old Hope Road in Kingston. Down the road from Papin. Down the road from the University of Technology. Down the road from the corner that takes you to the Irving Gate. Uh, Irving Gate at the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. And we've been told by our producer that they've decided to give this as an own goal. This was a goal. Oh, I can see why. The shot was off target. And but for the deflection from Kevin Graham, which is more, sig more significant than appeared real time, they've attributed poor old Kevin Graham as the scorer of the goal. And they've taken it off a Gina Talbot. So OG, Kevin Graham, is a scorer of the opening goal. And not a Talbot as we had previously communicated. Set we are for a return to action. There's Talbot. If he turns out to be man of the match, I can imagine Lija asking him, well, your first of the season, not quite. Uh, do you think the officials could have given you a blight on that one, Nation? Checks to ensure that there are 22 players on the pitch. He showed no red card in the first half and we're back underway. Staple now. That ball intended for Mullings. Taken care of by Burton. Handball. Devereaux McKenzie getting his arm in the way of Wutherland Harding's pass. These are the... This is one of those days you wish that the shadows would lengthen quickly and ease some of the heat that we're experiencing. You can see the umbrellas in the stands. Spectators huddling for shelter. Huddling is a defense of the Mobe United team as they try to ward off this free kick from Jashon Anglin. Good shot, Mr. Director. I see you. I also see Anglin standing over this free kick. Poor from Jashon Anglin's standards, by any standards, really. And then Allen 
And he has to watch it, you know. Nation runs at him. And tells him no more. Yeah, that's yeah. the universal sign, no more. He's on the yellow card. And that was a, a bad foul. But necessary in the context, if you're looking at it from a Harbour View perspective, that was a foul that his coach would be happy with him committing because they would have been vulnerable to the break. And that is a good foul, as you mentioned, but then now, when you think about the foul that he made in the first half to get the yellow card, a bad foul. completely <laughs> unnecessary. So it's stopping him from making those good fouls to really break up the game and get his team going or stop the opposing team, I should say. So it's a tough one for any midfielder. I wouldn't be surprised if I see him substituted at some point in and around the 60th minute. Well, Nation has told him that your evening of leniency or your afternoon of leniency is over. There was a fall on the play before McKenzie's cross. And so Harborview will get a free kick. Talk about this young man, Shavan Atnanol. We just saw him in the shot. Wearing number 16, there he is. Uh, has worked hard, but hasn't quite found the killer ball just yet. No, he hasn't. And he, yeah, I think it's a, a, a difficult one because at times he hasn't had the runners to really do so. But he has looked has had some good touches in the midfield but he's just really getting the ball forward is the issue yeah and then when he wins it and he looks up he sees only Alan Otti in an advanced position maybe Weatherly to the flank not much for him to hit Hamilton Turner long leg getting there first here's Mankumbani safety first flicked on by McDonald. Talbot being closed down by Otti. So the elastic band was for Otti. Here now in a bun. It was blowing all over the place in the first half and causing him some trouble. Now he has it under control. Ankumbani. Otti. Pumping Talbot out of the way. Referee says, yeah, that's a foul, Alan. told you before Otti the oldest man in this Moby United starting 11 at 30 years old second oldest Kevin Graham at 29 after that we have Johan Weatherly at 26 and then they're just young young men after that here's O'Shane Staple not an oldster himself can he run at Mankumbani he goes for the shot oh and for a moment it looked as if he would creep in at the Vody Burton's near post but he shoveled it behind for a corner. Not, no, not sure if it was a, a cross that didn't quite go right and turned into a shot. No, it was a shot. Looks as if it was a shot. And Burton getting down low to give away the corner. Harborview's ninth of the game. And we're on only minute 50. Lewis's corner beats everyone in a yellow and blue shirt. Graham calm to Allen. Wellington. Oh, hit the heel of Allen, but they combine once again. Here's Wellington. This looks good for Mobile United. And as I say, as I say that, the commentators curse, biting and biting hard. Wellington off the left foot, the pass way too heavy. Even you saying in his prime would struggle to put foot on that. Lord Bernard looks as if he has something to say. Which is rare, he just stands and stares. Quite undemonstrative, Lodo Bernard. But that's no weakness. Swept all before him last year in schoolboy football and where the JPL is concerned. Completed the, the feat of winning the biggest schoolboy football title and then the biggest title in the land overall which is the the premier league unprecedented stuff from the man where is his name on his cap ludlow here's a corner that courtney allen will take for more united they've committed six men to the box Otti attacking at the back post and he was over the back of the defender coming in very aggressively the man there guarding him was O'Shane Staple 
And Otti had eyes only for the ball. Went in very aggressively. But Staples standing his ground. Putting his body on his line on the line to help his team. Harborview have two men warming up. Moby have just sent two men to warm up. So both coaches already thinking about how they can make this game twist to their advantage. This is Allen. Anklin battling away against Allen. Wins the battle this time, fairly too. To their credit, Mobe United have started the second half well with a lot of energy, a lot of industry. Harborview have been on the back foot for majority of the half. Haven't had the control that they had towards the end of the half, so that will be interesting to see if Harborview can wrestle back said control. They won't with passes like that, but they will with industry like that. Well done, Nicholas Hamilton. So it's going to be a cat and mouse game for the remainder. Do cats still chase mice? <laughs> <laughs> Asking for a friend. Harding, oh, lovely skill to get rid of his defender. Harding sets it on the plate for Timur Lewis and the shot was blocked. Excellent block. Lewis just striding out his approach to the ball. Knew exactly what he wanted to do. And look at Odelan Harding getting rid of Devereaux McKenzie. Piling him, leaving him for dead and setting it back. And Timur Lewis is shot. Blocked. That was excellent approach play by Harding. Did everything right. The drag back was precise. Timur Lewis must have... His eyes must have lit up at that chance. But he couldn't convert. Unfortunate. It was a good block in the end, but Timar Lewis must be saying I really should have scored that one. But nonetheless, it's Harborview to get another corner. Corner number nine for Harborview. O'Shane Nation says, wait. He's having words with Kevin Graham. Saying, I know that you're a bad man, but when I'm on the football field, you'll behave. Okay, sir? Right? Let's go. Anglin. Met by Devereaux McKenzie. Good header. Clearing the lines effectively. Tavin Shaw closing down to Marlowe, who has to go all the way back to his goalkeeper. Obi oh, looking energized. <laughs> but how have you come again? Anglin has three runners. Couldn't connect with any of them with the long pass. Kenzo wins the free kick, wants to take it quickly, but Anglin stops him. Just get the impression that Moby want to play this game much quicker than Harbour View do. For obvious reasons, they're the ones trading, so they have to be urgent. This is Weatherly. And the cross can't find Otti because the cross just isn't good. Brutally honest there from George Davis, but it is the truth, not the best cross by Weatherly whatsoever has found himself in very good spaces in this game but just hasn't executed well enough especially for that man's liking Donovan Duque, coach of Mobile United of course and those subs are rearing to go looking to make their impression on this game if they get a chance the other Wellington twin Renardo is among the three substitutes warming up for Mobile Uh, the Harborview subs look, look as if they've gone through their routine. They're done. One of them, Jamon Shepard, can tell by the distinctive headband. Looks as if they're ready to come in. Anyway. There's Shepard. Wellington's campering after this. Mankumbani. Good touch by Allen. 
Some of his touches have been really nice, Courtney Allen. No nonsense clearance from Ajini Talbot. The wind keeps the ball in play. Bennett. And down. I did hear a clatter from that clearance through a tangle of legs. Jashon Anglin takes a lot to put him on the turf. He's a tough boy. He's feeling the pain in this moment. Mankumbani following through. Well, the kick was Talbot kicked the ball away and his kick in the follow through it caught his teammate. So Anglin injured by one of his own. In war you call it friendly fire. <laughs> Spectators trying to hide from Mr. Son as best as they can. They've brought out the newspaper sheets. Cushions. There's Carville Stewart in the yellow shirt. He's sitting beside Clyde Giridini. Chin in his hand. Carville. And I can speak of days that Liger knows nothing about. There was a time, Liger, when Carville Stewart's house was the only place you could go to watch international football because he was the only man in the harbour with a satellite dish. <laughs> <laughs> a satellite dish? A satellite dish. Imagine that. <laughs> that was a bit new to me, but... Those were in the days of Maradona in Serie A with Michel Platini and company. Talbot. Big clearance once again. The breeze pushes it far downfield. Not a lot of not a lot of settled play. No. In this half. Oh, they're, they're alleging that he picked it up outside the 18-yard box. Bennett is saying no. The referee is calling him, saying, Yeah, the ball is mine. Come here. It is a free kick. Will he card him? Will he will he book him? Usually the referees normally book the goalkeepers for these things because these things are often egregious. But Nation keeps his card in his pocket this time. And he says, wait on the whistle. He's trying to mark the spot. Actually, Burton. Yeah, did he take it outside? Yes, he did. Yes, his he foot did. was right <laughs> out there. Yes, he did. <laughs> Good of the harbour view boys to spot that. And this free kick. Would you go direct from here or would you try to find the teammate? I think it's whichever foot swinging it in. If it's Nicholas Hamilton, he has to shoot. If it's hiding, I think he has to cross. But just judging by the position of the people in the box, I think it's going to be a Nicholas Hamilton shot. To that far post. Here we go. Looks to be Hamilton. Hamilton spears this one in. Oh, it's off the crossbar. The goalkeeper was there, had a hand there. The ball crashes off the crossbar and to safety for Mobe United. It wasn't to the far post like I would have thought. It was to the near post. Did really well to get the ball up and over the wall and dip, but he just couldn't dip enough for him. It was a good effort by Nicholas Hamilton. Josh on Anglin, you called it right. 60th minute, well, 61st minute, and he's substituted. Mostly for the fact that he's gotten himself in disciplinary trouble. And he makes way for Colorado Murray. Then Timar Lewis is also being withdrawn, his race run. And he's going to be placed by Jamon Shepard. Yeah, I expect to see Kasim Priest to drop a little bit deeper now. It was Anglin who was picking the ball up and dropping into the defensive line. I'm expecting to see Priest doing that more now. Shepard playing just a little bit in front of him. And Clarida Murray will be going more up front, maybe playing a little bit off Kemar Mullings. Meanwhile, in response, Mobe United have sent for one of their warming substitutes and he's taking on some fluid because he's been required to enter the field of play now. So Ludlow Bernard twists first and makes two changes one time. And he is a coach, of course, that does think that the substitutes and in-game changes really dictate the results of games. He is a, a coach that believes that strongly. Giovanni Burton was indeed carded for that offense. There you go. Here's Alan Otti and he's offside. <coughs> hey, 
Yeah, the referees really avoid booking goalkeepers in those situations. Are you taking their time with it at the back? Brackenridge now. Shepard gives it away. Oh, awful touch from Allen. One of the few bad touches he's produced all afternoon. And Murray, his first intervention is to fall the man, the Englishman via DRC, Brian Mankumbani. Tavinshaw from Obey. Turner for Weatherly can he get there yes he can can he find the right pass he's trying to and the ball ricocheted off Brackenridge challenged for it ricochets off Otti safely held by Bennett Brackenridge tries to find Hamilton and does so nice take by Nicholas Hamilton and after right after surviving two attempts to bring him down the easy bit was to find Odell and Harding with the pass he kicks it into the touch much to the frustration of Harding and to the frustration of Hamilton himself who sheepishly apologizes there's another change to be made this one by Mobe United their number 10 is coming in that's Leonardo Fogarty the ex Rossi's man and one of the Wellington twins Ronaldo sees his name up for the change So Rossi's is the Costa Cup hero. Leo Fogarty is on. Talbot. Go like a hot potato. Otti! Ooh, the Mobe United bench put their hands on their heads collectively. Can't believe that their marksman missed that. That was a bad miss. Yes, it really was. And if it's anyone that you want that chance fall into, it will be Otti. He just didn't, didn't strike that with any conviction. It broke for him kindly, almost too kindly. Brackenridge was applying the pressure, just couldn't guide it home. He was the right side of Brackenridge and couldn't find the finish. Staple versus Burton. Had to be careful there, but he slaps it away for a throw. Action at both ends. Otis eyes lighting up and it fell in the right sector for him. Brackenridge was there. Definitely his presence had something to do with the Mobe man not getting a clean strike, but you really would back Otti to score in that position. Here he is once again, Alan Otti. Forgot it to his left. But he tried to bend it into the path of Weatherly to his right with a, an ostentatious pass that didn't come through. Sometimes you have to keep things simple. You really do. But simple isn't what wins games at times. It very often does, though. <laughs> Murray. Hamilton brought down. And uh, still on his back, Nicholas Hamilton. Well, no. Nation actually stopped the play because he says the ball wasn't spotted before the free kick was taken. It was still in motion. Six to sixth minute. I'd be surprised if we don't get another goal in this game. Brackenridge back to Talbot. The two centre halves who combined for the Harborview goal. Pity it was taken away from Talbot. And to be fair, when he saw the angle from behind the goal, Lige, Talbot's finish was that of a centre half going wide. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he was aiming that one real well, just wanted to get a shot off. Yeah, he just swung and he got lucky. Well, luck is sometimes what you need in yeah, these yes, situations sir. when you're struggling in front of goal. In war, they say it's better to be a lucky general than a good general. Wellington. Ah, big part. Brackenridge to Priestley. Glorious pass to Odell and Harding. Lovely take. Does he have help? Yes, he has from Nicholas Hamilton. Inside the 18-yard box, Not trying to work the angle kid. for the shot. And he's, he's crowded out. He dithered in possession. Allen can't find Fogarty, but he was fouled. 
We knew what Nicholas Hamilton was thinking as soon as he got the ball there. So to the defender. <laughs> and that's going to be a problem going forward. I think if you have that, that, that type of skill and that's, a, that way, that's what you want to execute, you see it a lot with left-footed right wingers. It's difficult for them to cut in at times. So it will be the same for Nicholas Hamilton moving forward. The defenders are alive to his threat now. McDonald sparing this one in. Bit of a hit and hope. Oti has been doing a lot of running up front, but just not getting the breaks. And just now when he had his chance, his opportunity fell to him. You could say that he was being pressured by the defender, but he, Oti himself would tell you, if I got that chance again, I'd score. If I got it ten times, I'd score nine times. That was the one time he didn't score. Priestless pass for Kemar Mullings, who's been quiet the second half. Mankumbani using his big frame well. The Jamaica Premier League has had players from near and far, near in the Caribbean. Several St. Lucians here. We have a few Haitians. Last season, we had Multinationals as well. We've had Bahamian, Leslie Stenfler for this same Mobe United team. And that was a sliding tackle from Nevon Turner. O'Shane Nation right on the spot. And he saw the slide coming through on Jamon Shepard. Yeah, that's a, that's a free kick. And that's a, that's a booking every time. We've had Brazilians here. We've had Ecuadorians here. As we get another water break in the 69th minute. Time enough, uh, Lish, for you to assess what both the, what, what, what the teams have tried to do respectively since the start of the second half. I think in the second half, the quality hasn't been at the highest of standards. I think it's more of the same from Harbour View, but they haven't had the control, especially in passing the ball because Montego Bay have employed a, a, a more intense press, but they're still looking to pass the ball in and around the, ba the back line and then switching it out to Harding on the left. That's been their game plan all game. It has worked at times. It hasn't worked at times. And then for Mobe, it's just really upping the intensity, trying to get chances created in that way. And they did create a chance. It did fall to the right man in Ati, but he just couldn't take the chance. So it's, it's going to be a game of fine margins. I wouldn't be surprised if this one ended 1-0. One but there might be a goal in this one yet still. But the question is, who is he going to go to? Is he going to go to Harbour View so they can extend that lead? Or will it go to Mobe United? And can they continue the rut or dig a deeper rut for Harbour View that they've been in lately? Or will Harbour View dig themselves out of said rut? They're around 25 minutes away from doing so. Let's see how the rest of this game will pan out. I did say I'd be surprised if we didn't get another goal. I still feel we get another one. Don't know where it will go. So the other goal would, goal would do just fine. The fans still sheltering. The sun begins its journey home. As we see DeMar Rose coming in for Kemara Mullings, who, as I remarked, was quiet in the second half. Heavily involved in the first half, but his influence waned. And so he's replaced by the export more man DeMar Rose. Garth Stewart also coming in to replace Kasim Priestley. So... I think that just goes to speak about the control that I was saying that Harborview didn't have as they try a tricky free kick here. But Harborview weren't having the control that they were having in the, the first half. And I think once they take off angling, playing in those deeper areas, they're going to want more control. And I think that's what Demar Rose brings in addition to his creativity. Harborview with 57% of the ball. Hobe with the big chance in the second half. Good fighting, a good tenacity by Courtney Allen to win that ball just now. Here's Mackenzie with the fancy flick. He had stopped his run. Ought not to have. Can forget to find the cross. The ball was bouncing and he lashed at it and couldn't really connect Leonardo Fogarty. Mobe will make another change. Coming in will be number 23, Marlando Maxwell. As soon 
as Mr. Nation sanctions it. Harborview, meanwhile, on that far side through Nicholas Hamilton into the path of Odell and Harding. Harding, coolly passed to Harding, back to Grant Stewart. It was into his, into his, the general direction that Stewart was running, but Devereaux McKenzie on his job. And he got a, a pat on the back by from his defensive colleagues for how alert he was. This is Harding looking, looking, looking to see who would have taken the pass. McKenzie intercepted. That's one thing I like about Harding. He always makes the right decision, decisions when he gets into those areas. Always looking for a teammate, never just lashing it across. And he did so again. But just couldn't apply the finish. He couldn't get to the teammate. Weatherly fouled. And Nation. Here's his assistant say change. And they're making a triple change, Mobe. So they're bringing in number 23, Marlon de Maxwell. They're bringing in number 17, Shaquille West. And they're bringing in number 20... Well, I did say 23 already, Marlon de Maxwell. There he is. And the other Wellington twin, Renardo, also gets a game. So they started with one Wellington. They're going to finish with the other Wellington. Shavon McDonald withdrawn. Devereaux McKenzie gone as well. nice to see also that the time has drastically the temperature has drastically gone down it's like God turned off the sun I'm very thankful to him for that and I'm sure the players are yep as well it's no nice outside perfect conditions for a Sunday ball game yeah just like the one we're watching here the only thing the only thing I missed was he, I, I, they, they could have done with turning on the sprinklers at half time yeah they really could have maybe they'll do it in between the games yeah but they're disadvantaging these boys because these boys started at almost at high noon the sun was so hot at 3 o'clock and the, 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 the field I wouldn't want to be sprinting and then be tripped on this field the good thing is that the grass cover is good and it's a good field we're not saying it isn't we're just saying that the heat has made the surface bone dry Brackenridge with this deep throw he's trying to do a Rory de lap doesn't quite that get that distance on it man down for harbour view seems to be hurt play still continues a staple it is favoring the right ankle Nation now giving him some attention. But he, the way he beat the turf, I thought he needed medical treatment. <laughs> Miraculously, he's back up. The way how he screamed as well. Yes. <laughs> Brian Mankumbani with the throw for Mobe United. So you know what they call him at Mobe, Lish? Brian Mankumbani. They, they just say Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the story of Chelsea and the day Sethar Athpiliqueta came to the club from Spain. And John Terry said, What's your name? And when he told everybody his name, they said, All right, today your name is Dave. <laughs> He's been known <laughs> as Dave ever, ever since. since. <laughs> Here's Garth Stewart. Go for the shot! Ooh, for a moment there, for a moment, it threatened to dip beneath the crossbar. He'll tell you that he saw the keeper off his line, Garth Stewart. And he went for the spectacular, the tall man. Yes, he did have a look and he was measuring it. Struck that really well, given the distance. But just too much height on it. He really finishes games, Garth Stewart. If he starts, he's a certain to be substituted. And they're just a little bit, a, a few aspects to his game that they want to see improve. It looks as if he's playing as a target man today. Usually he's a defensive midfielder, Garth Stewart. But he's being pressed into service up front. Here's Colorado Murray. Finding Staple. That's Murray wanted the ball released quickly and Staple didn't release it quickly and Murray's upset as he should be. Poor, poor play there by Staple. They win it back though, Harborview. 
<laughs> Jawan Shepard speared that into the path of Murray. Couldn't get there. Took his off his seat. He's now into full coaching mode. He spent the entire first half. Well, but for a few moments or two where he got up to berate some of his players. Sitting, having a look. He's up now, trying to plot a way back into this game. His team have given him energy and urgency in the second half, but they've not given him a goal just yet. Staple clears. Anywhere will do. Lucky upset that they didn't get to take the throw quicker. Ludlow Bernardo also into his full coaching, gesticulating wildly. Look at him, very animated. This is one for the books. It's rare we see that, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Demar Rose across to Hardy. Colorado Murray. Ooh, the pass to Garth Stewart. Was cute around the corner. Stewart was on his heels though, not quite sure he would have gotten there. Because he didn't anticipate the pass. You can ask players, you can press players into playing whichever position, but you have to have the instinct for the position. Lish would agree. Garth Stewart, not quite sure he has the instinct of a striker. A striker would have been looking to spring the offside trap there if Maurice Pass had come through. Stewart was still on his heels. He didn't anticipate that sharp pass for him to burst onto. And the at moment is coming up right now. That at moment saw a combination. The ball turned over. Look at this flick from Brackenridge. One center half to another center half. Talbot. Talbot's shot was off target, but it deflected off Kevin Graham. And it tricked goalkeeper Davoni Burton, who couldn't keep it out. That's how hard of you went in front. The Sports Max at moment. Back to live action. Hamilton picks out a good pass to Staple. He's offside. Richard Williams disagrees. I'd like him to tell me when. He went to school to study to be an assistant referee. <laughs> Trust a professional, my friend. <laughs> I'm joking. We have to disagree with them sometime. Well, Brackenridge takes a shot in the head from Fogarty. Nation saw nothing wrong with that, but Brackenridge is writhing in pain. It is a head injury, so the game yep. should be stopped. And Nation will stop it now. Mobe player, the Mobe bench, very upset that he stopped the play. They're saying he was play acting. And Dwayne Ambos there, the assistant coach, is having strong words with the assistant referee on this near side. I didn't see anything much there, if anything at all. Brackenridge clever, he is. Let's see it. This is the replay. Fogarty goes in and there's no contact with Brackenridge's head. So he has bought a free kick and bought some respite for his team. And Harborview and their fans will say, well done. Duki will say, hmm. <laughs> Delay of game tactics. Back we are to live action at the Guard Stewart playing as a lone striker for Harborview as they try to hold on to this lead. Here's Rose. Looks to his right, no passing options. Or, pass, or, or passing options, so he waited. Staple, long, asking Stewart to use his considerable frame to get two of this. He goes up, but he gets hit in the face, and there's going to be a card, you know. Kevin Graham has taken another victim. This is a genuine head injury. Or face in, or, or, well, he got struck in the face. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The arm went up. Kevin Graham knew exactly what he was doing. Wanted to leave some pain on Garth Stewart and the veteran succeeding. We call him veteran. He's only 29 in this Mobe team. He's like an old man. And he's still only a young man himself. And this, in this setup, he would appear to be like a senior citizen. Yes, sir. 
I'm on a vast experience. So the umbrellas have closed up. If Mr. Director does a sweep of the stands, I don't think you'll see a single one up. And uh, the spectators will be very, very happy for the reprieve. Well, it's not even reprieve. The sun is gone for the day. Yep. There they are. Watching it in comfort. The breeze is nice. And, uh, yep. She's watching our commentary on the Sportsmax app and hoping that Garth Stewart is okay. There's a bit of a dispute breaking out on the sidelines here. Ryan Wellington involved. The fourth official, Alexi Perry, has also gotten involved. O'Shea Nation has his card out. He's a stern character. Nicholas Hamilton. And let's see who gets the punishment here. It may be a member of the Mobe United coaching staff who said words that the fourth official has reported to a shade nation who's asking for calm he's getting a report from alexi perry who's telling him what happened and i'm sure action will be taken appropriately nation walks across to the huddle where the mobile united players are what will he do he's asked alan Otti to come to him and collect a yellow card so Otti gets booked and that's about it Otti doesn't mind he's has bigger things on his brain he wants to hear what his coach says in so far as plotting away back into this game is concerned the time is running out fast that's the Harborview crew general manager Clyde Giudini chairman Carville Stewart and their colleagues over in that section they like they'll be liking what they're seeing because their team is in front and after all that it's Harborview with a free kick yep just saw one of our cameramen walk by Lish, who's usually on duty and someone asked him why he's not working he said he went to rebel salute last night Nicholas Hamilton puts this into the box he just gave you a hail Lish. good man very good very good and I think that's reason enough to miss a, a day of work <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> Turner off the thigh he had to improvise the clearance because he was under pressure Ooh, lovely turn by Demar Rose cool under pressure Talbot not so cool but he gets some distance on the clearance Mankumbani intercepted this is Allen Obey have the ball in the wrong section of the field and he gives it away Allen to Colorado more into the space for Shane Staple does he have a cross he fires it across the goal and it's a corner Kevin Graham got there. He's really been involved today, Kevin yep. Graham. He had to get that touch. Yeah, Hamilton was just waiting to tap in. And but for that sliding challenge from Kevin Graham, he would have been in business. It's going to be yet another corner for Harborview. Corner the number 12. Made by Stewart. There was a foul on the play as well. Fogarty. If he gathers, he'll need help. Allen. Excellent defending from Talbot. This is Murray. Into the space for Hamilton. Glorious pass slid through to Nicholas Hamilton. But he may have lost the momentum on the attack. Nice tricks. Can't get around the Wellington twin though. Renardo standing strong. West gives the ball away. And Demar Rose to Shepard. Wide to Harding. Ease the way from the challenge Odell and Harding who's been impressive this afternoon. Hamilton. 
Otty against Wellington of the Ryan variety. Yellow card to Orderland Harding. Change lined up by Harborview. Looks to be Sean Daly who's coming in. Nicholas Hamilton is down, needing treatment. And he's called for this. Well, they've set the stretcher. Looks to be a knee issue. Navon Turner helping with a little massage for Nicholas Hamilton. Lord Bernard sitting for the moment as they try to see this game out. Parts of it haven't been pretty. Parts of it have been good. Talbot is also down. So how about you have two men stricken at the moment? And they only have one substitution left, which they're making now. So Hamilton leaves to be replaced by Sean Daly. And let's hope that Talbot can continue. Let's hope he was just taking a rest while the ball was dead. Back to his feet. Looks to be moving okay. He'll be fine. I did say the sun has gone for the day, but it has come back for one last hurrah. And on cue, the umbrellas pop back open in the stands. A lot of talking in the Harborview defense as they try to ward off this corner kick. Harding with the near post header, he was fouled, he was hammered. And the nation gestures frantically for the trainers to come on. And he's calling them. That man is one of my candidates for the man of the match, though. I can tell you, Ligier. Orderland Harding. Don't know if you have another candidate. Yeah, I think it's between either him or... Talbot. Talbot. I'd, I'd lean towards... Ah, it's a tough one. I'd lean towards Harding for his overall play. On both sides of the ball. On both sides of the ball. Um, but Talbot has had a very solid game as well. And he's been instrumental not only in... The goal, of course, but also in the fact that Harborview are keeping a clean sheet at current. So it's a tough one. Harborview do have a good defensive record this season. Although they've conceded 10 goals, four of those, you have to remember, came in one game. So aside from that, this will be now their 10th game. Apart from that game, only six goals conceded in that time frame if the result stays the same. So... They do have a good defensive record, Harborview. And they'll have six minutes to hold on. Nation books goalkeeper Anthony Bennett for time wasting. Saying, I'm not having that young man. And if you don't hurry up now, I'll give you another one. And you can sit on the bench and waste all the time you want. Harding is back on the pitch. Have you up to their full complement. So that make it what? Three and two, five yellow cards issued by O'Shane Nation. Three to Harborview, Bennett, Harding, and Anglin. And the two for Mobe United, Kevin Graham, Alonati. Well, yeah. There have been seven yellow cards. Four for Mobe United. Thank you, Mr. Producer. Devoni Burton, Kevin Graham, Nevon Turner, and Alan Otti. So four Mobe United, three for Harborview, Anthony Bennett, Odell and Harding, and Joshua Anglin. So yeah. Wellington. Allen, another lovely first touch by Courtney Allen and then he does the hard part so well and the easy part to find 
Mankumbani. Can't find Mankumbani at all. Fewer things infuriate me more in a football field. A player controls a 30 yard pass, stone dead with first touch. Simple ball to be knocked into space for a teammate, can't do it. We've seen some nice touches from Courtney Allen so far in this game. But his use of the ball after taking control has left a, a lot to be desired. Stewart through to Sean Daly. Sean Daly running through. Can Daly fight Harborview second? No, he can't. He scuffs his shot. Just from his approach, I knew that that wasn't going to be a very... A very firm shot, never looked confident when approaching, half balancing the end, tried to take the shot with his left foot. And it was a poor one, dragged it wide. It was more good approach play by Harborview, created, still creating chances in the 93rd minute. So I wondered how big that Alan Otimis would prove to be. It's going to be big. That was the difference between one point to leave with or none here's Shepard Mankumbani Otti goes down and it's a handball says Oshane Nation it's a Harborview free kick frustrating afternoon for Alan Otti He's been at the races, he's been aggressive, he's been offering himself, but the consistent quality supply just hasn't come to him. And when he got his big chance, he couldn't capitalize. It'll be a, a quiet bus ride back for him to Mobe, you believe, Alan Otti, after the team's showing today. Not entirely his fault, but then his teammates, if he turns on them, if he quarrels with them, will say, well, Alan you got the chance and you missed it it's sure, Fogarty I'm sure a lot will utter I, well I did my job <laughs> you didn't do yours <laughs> game of fine margins football is and it seems as if the finest of margins will decide this one Mankobani can't get it beyond staple. Stewart puts his head there. Kevin Graham went with his foot. Graham has already been booked, has already been booked. A second yellow card equals red. We spoke about him being so involved in play. He's really done it all today. Own goal, goal saving challenges. But on the other end of the spectrum, Two really, really rash tackles, both against Garth Stewart. Garth Stewart, both of them, because the first one a few minutes ago yep. was for that elbow when yep. he was jumping for the header. Yep. And both of those tackles seem to be out of frustration more than anything else. He's been involved, but I'm sure not in the ways that he would have wanted. Ooh, almost a known goal from Wellington. Had his goalkeeper Burton scrambling. He was towing it back to his goalkeeper for clearance. But he got too much on it and lucky. Lucky having a rhetorical conversation with his bench. Feels as if justice hasn't been on his side, I'm sure, Donovan Lucky. Or flatly that his side. Haven't had any justice in this game. Great strength there by Colorado Murray. Sure there isn't much time left. Oh, 
Fall on the play. Moria judged to have fouled Tavin Shaw. And Mobe have one last chance. They've been, they're being waved forward, the players, by their teammates and the coaching staff to get up the pitch. Can Burton send this far enough for a chance to follow? Big kick. And it runs all the way through to Anthony Bennett, who will take some time with the ball. As we've exhausted the additional time and Oshane Nation will call this to a halt anytime. Anytime. Anytime now. That's it, Harborview have beat Mobe United 1 0. First half own goal from Kevin Graham, who then got two yellow cards in the second half. Both of them for fouls on Garth Stewart. And Graham exits the park. Well, he re enters uh, the Ashenheim Stadium. But his contribution this evening, injurious to his team's performance and the result overall. It's Harborview 1, Montego Bay United 0. So the sun was raging hot when O'Shea Nation sent them on their way. In this match, we can have a fixture at the JPL. Nicholas Hamilton's shot saved by goalkeeper Devon Burt. Another Hamilton shot, this one off the right boot, blocked by Kevin Graham, heroic. From the centre half, putting his body on the line to help his team. And then, Alan Otti, well, Graham it was into space for Weatherly. Weatherly couldn't find the target. McDonald into the path of Allen. Look at that first touch. But then the ball bubbles and his attempted pass to Alan Otti cleared the crossbar. Looked ugly. And then this moment. Flick by Brackenridge to Talbot is shot off target. But it ricochets off. Kevin Graham. He was at the center of everything good and bad for Mobe United today. His deflection beating his goalkeeper. And that's how. Harm of you went in front. So many of the game's big moments involving Kevin Graham. Witherly off the left foot. Batted away by Penny. Priestley. Hamilton. Thought he chose the wrong option when deciding to go to the line. Easy for the goalkeeper in the end. Then look at Oda and Hardy. Over the head of Devereux McKenzie. Leaves him for dead. Trying to cut back the ball for Timar Lewis. And at the block. Provided expertly. Or else that would have been 2 0 and a good night. Then this chance. Look at Talbot. Struggling to get the ball away. The header finds Alan Otti who must score. Can't score. A head in hand moment for the Mobe United marksman. Missed their best chance, the best chance of the game. Then Kevin Graham had to tackle. Did he have to tackle that way? Not sure. But he was booked already for the elbow on guard, Stewart. And two yellows in football equal one red. So, Shea Nation calling a halt to proceedings after about 97 minutes. 11 shots by Harborview, well, four Harborview, three of them on target. 21 fouls in the game, 20, 12 committed by Mobe. There were eight yellow cards, one red. 12 corners for Harborview, who also had 56% possession. Jay Williams is with our man of the match, Order and Hardy. Man of the match performance, you didn't get a goal, you didn't get an assist, but your defensive work really paid off. Talk us through the game. I mean, work, um, we prepare really hard this week on defensive work, you know. Clean sheet, win game, and that's what we did, exactly. 
clean sheets do win games. He didn't win it the last game, but he won it this one because of perseverance. And even in your attacking play, it was really hard work down that left-hand side. Do you think that there was a change in your role today? Uh, that's what the coach want me to do, you know, so I just came out here and do what he said exactly. You did exactly what he said and that paid off with a win. It was an excellent performance. Congrats on that and congrats on your manager match performance as well. All right, thank you. Now we'll be moving on to the winning coach. Coach Ludlow Bernard, of course. And now it'll be Donovan Duki, the coach that wasn't on the winning side today. Coach, talk us through that performance. It wasn't the best, but were there positives for you to garner from that performance? Well, it was a good performance. Um, sometimes you lose game and you play well. Sometimes you don't lose and you play poor. But um, today there's a lot of positive that we can take from the game. I was very impressed with tactically how we approached the game. Early in the game, in the first 10-15 minutes, we had three chance. Indecisions in the box caused us not to get on the score sheet. Um, we did our homework. I thought we took away some things that they wanted. We understood their strength and we worked on that. We played in transition for most part of the game. I thought we should have gone ahead comfortably. It didn't happen. Unfortunately, we gave up a soft goal, but there's a lot of positives to take from the game. You mentioned a lot of positives. I think a, a, a big issue today was probably the surface in terms of sometimes the ball bubbling up on your players. Do you think that had a, a strong impact on the game, that and of course the weather as well? No, no, no. No excuse for losing today. It was a good surface. Um, not the best in the world, but one that is conducive to a good style of play. Um, kudos to Arborview, they worked a lot. I like the tempo of the game, the intensity was good. The physicality of the team, it had everything that um, could be reflective of a derby game. I was very impressed with how we were competitive, but um, in the end we were in clinical today and we lost the game. Alright, thanks very much coach. Thank you too. Now we're moving on to the winning coach. Coach Lola Bernard, I'm sure he's very pleased with anything. He must be at least pleased with the win. Coach, talk us through that game. Do you think that you had a, a, a good game plan? Do you think he was executed well? And how happy are you with the win? Yeah, I'm, I'm particularly pleased about um, our, our reserves, you know. Substitute coming on and, and probably helping to kind of hold, hold the ship afloat because we were losing the midfield and losing our attack. I figured that it had to do with the breeze here today. You know, it was very strong against us, so it was difficult, but it enabled us to play on the counter. And I thought we got some real good look-ins on our counters. So do you think that um, in an attacking sense, you could have scored even more goals than just the one today? Yeah, we started the game on the front foot and we had a couple of opportunities at the beginning. You know, but um, as it stands right now, half of you is reverting to to being a very conservative team and we want to be very difficult to beat right now you know because we have to probably manage some of the the damage that has already been created and eventually claw our way back up the charts you mentioned that you're going more of a defensive approach you started with three center backs today do you think that helped you more in the build-up phase or was that really just for just more defensive solidity um disappointingly today our, our midfield um, lot the effort and intensity from the, the beginning of the second half. Um, Priestley and Anglin weren't their usual self, you know. But as I said, I asked Murray to come in and, and play a role, and he did it very well for us. And Rose and Rose and Shepard came on, and they helped to steady the ship quite a bit. All right, thanks, Coach. Good win. Thank you very much. All right, so we are done with the first match of our doubleheader here at the Ashenheim Stadium in St. Andrew, home of Jamaica College. Mount Pleasant, uh, they won't be in action. Well, they're not in action in the second game, but they would have not been pleased by the result because Harbour View get three more points and that takes them further up the table. And they beat Montego Bay United. That's the aim I was looking for. 1-0.